Hello everyone, my name is Ranger Elizabeth from the Parklands of Floyd's Fort and today we're going to look at how earth materials are broken into four different spheres. Let's start off by naming all the things we can think of that the earth is made out of. So if we look around me right now, we can name a couple of things. There's plants, there's water, there's rocks, the wind is blowing, so there's wind and air, there are clouds in the sky, uh, I'm a human, so there's humans and plants, there's soil and sand. All of these different things are called earth materials, and we break them into four different groups. There's the biosphere, the geosphere, the hydrosphere, and the atmosphere. So today we're gonna to look at each one of those spheres individually, and then we are gonna talk about how those spheres interact with each other. The first sphere that we're gonna look at is the geosphere. The beginning of that word, geo, means earth. So the geosphere is everything that is the earth itself. It is rocks and gravel, like what's behind me here. It is soil underneath your feet as you walk. It's also sand and landforms like mountains and volcanoes. So this landform here is called a gravel bar. And this gravel bar was formed when water slowed down and deposited all these small rocks to form a small island next to a creek. The next sphere we're gonna talk about is the hydrosphere. So the beginning of the word hydrosphere or hydro means water. So the hydrosphere contains all of the water on earth and its different states. So behind me here is a creek. This is fresh water and it is liquid water. Some other examples of fresh water include rivers and ponds and lakes. There's some water that's inside of the earth, such as groundwater. There's earth that's solid, like icebergs and glaciers. And there's also water in the sky. So today is a cloudy day, as you can see. And clouds themselves are actually made up of water. They're made up of water vapor. So all of these are examples of the hydrosphere. When I go for a hike, I might see water in the form of creeks or maybe some ponds. And if there's clouds in the sky, that's another way I might see the hydrosphere. The third sphere that we're going to talk about is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is simply all of the air and elements that are around us. This can include oxygen, which we experience simply by breathing deeply while we go for a hike, but it also contains other elements that are in the air, such as nitrogen, carbon, helium, hydrogen, and other things. In the atmosphere, we can also experience wind. So today it is a bit windy. You might not see um, the leaves behind me moving in the wind, but it is a little bit windy. So wind occurs in the atmosphere. The fourth and final sphere that we are going to talk about is the biosphere. We as humans are members of the biosphere, as well as plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, and anything else that is considered living. So behind me we see some examples of plants. They may not look alive because it's winter, but we do see some green here on the ground. I can also show you, even though this is a dead log here, we can notice how fungi is growing on this log. That's an example of life in the biosphere. Bacteria is also an example. So soil underneath our feet, even though it may be an earth material part of the geosphere, has lots and lots of bacteria living inside of it. That's part of the biosphere. Even we as humans have bacteria and organisms living inside of us, in our gut, and in our intestines. Those are also examples of the biosphere. 
While we can name lots of different ways that the biosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and atmosphere are different, the reality is that they are interacting with each other constantly. So we see examples of that in nature. So take for example these trees behind me. These are some large sycamore trees. So the trees themselves are living, so they are members of the biosphere, but they have roots that go deep into the soil to root that tree in so it doesn't fall over. So this tree is depending on the geosphere to keep it standing upright. The roots in the soil are also sucking up all of the water to provide nutrients for this tree. So this tree is reliant on the hydrosphere for its water and its life. Finally, le trees use their leaves, which we don't see today because it's the winter time, but in the spring and summer, trees have leaves and those leaves depend on oxygen in the atmosphere to go through photosynthesis and create food for that tree. So everything in all of the spheres is constantly interacting. Other examples can include a flood. So the flood, which is part of the hydrosphere, can cause erosion in the geosphere, it can displace animals in the biosphere, and it can be caused by weather and rain in the atmosphere. So take some time to think about different ways that the spheres are interacting around you right now. One way that the spheres interact with each other is the water cycle, which is the movement of water between oceans, land, and the atmosphere. Everything on the planet is constantly moving and changing. Changes in one sphere can have an effect on other spheres. One example of an Earth process that affects all spheres is the water cycle. All of the water on Earth today existed when Earth was formed almost 5 billion years ago. At any time, that water can be in different places like rivers, oceans, creeks, glaciers, or even as clouds in the sky. As water changes states, it can travel through different spheres. Water can flow through creeks, it can be under rocks and the ground is groundwater, or it can even be inside humans and animals as we drink it. So let's do a quick review. The Earth is made up of four different spheres. The biosphere contains all living things. The hydrosphere contains all of the water. The atmosphere is all of the air and elements that's in the air or the sky. And the geosphere are all earth materials that make up the earth itself, such as rocks, sand, and dirt. All of these spheres, though they may be different, are constantly interacting in different ways. And their interactions are what make up everyday life here on earth. Thank you so much for joining me today as we talk about Earth's four different spheres. Don't forget to do the work and the activities that go along with this unit, and I hope to see you out here at the park soon. Thank you. Goodbye.